children today we are going to study the second chapter in history and civics for class 8 and the name of the chapter is the age of revolutions so in this lesson basically we are going to study about these two revolutions that is the american war of independence and the french revolution so you know this 18th century ushered in a new era in the history of the world there were two significant events that strengthened the forces of democracy and nationalism throughout the world so the first one being the american war of independence so the discovery of america led england france spain and holland to establish their colonies there so these countries established their colonies there in the modern america from the 16th century onwards people from different european countries began to settle in america the american war of independence was the first ever organized movement in the history in which people asserted the right to rule themselves it led to some major changes the most important being the birth of the united states of america in this region in america they were basically colonies because they were the settlers from these countries like england france spain and holland so let's study something about the colonies by the middle of the 18th century there were 13 british colonies along the east coast of north america people who had settled in these colonies had originally come from england they had gone there seeking money freedom and better life the colonies which were under the control of british government enjoyed a considerable amount of freedom in matters of internal administration because mostly they had come from england every colony had a governor and a local council the local council was elected by the people who resided in that colony the local councils passed laws and even levied imposed taxes so under this we are going to study the causes of this american war of independence the colonies despite enjoying independence and in internal administration were controlled by the british government in economic matters for example the colonies were forbidden to use non british ships for trading purposes products such as tobacco sugar and cotton could be exported only to england and that to at prices fixed by the government that means even if they were settlers there in america but all the terms and conditions were to be followed by the british of the british the colonies had no representation in the british parliament that means they were paying taxes they were charged accordingly but they did not have any say any representation there in the british parliament the colonies strongly criticized the british government's constant demand for money every time the government needed money to fund its war in europe and elsewhere it imposed new taxes on these colonies in 1765 the british parliament passed the stamp act which made affixation of stamps on all documents compulsory the colonies refused to pay the tax on the grounds that as the british parliament did not have any representatives from the colonies it did not have the right to levy taxes either therefore the colonies protested against the act and adopted the slogan no taxation without representation under pressure from this protest the british government repealed the stamp act what was the next cause the british government believed that since the colonies existed for the good of the mother country it had a right to tax them thus the government imposed tax on tea to assert its right to levy taxes the government decision to tax tea was severely criticized by the colonists the settlers in 1773 several colonies refused to unload the tea that came from england in boston a group of people 
disguised as native Indians, raided British ships and dumped the crates of tea into the sea. This incident is known as the Boston Tea Party, a very famous incident. And this has sent the American War of Independence. The next cause is, the colonists were inspired in their struggle by the writings of philosophers such as John Locke, John Harrington, John Milton and Thomas Paine. They wrote that all men are equal and have some basic human rights. All men have a right to earn a living and in any way they like and raise their voice against any kind of injustice. Such views gave immense strength to the colonists. So these ideas, they gave lot of energy, strength to whom? The colonists to revolt against whom? The British government. The beginning. In 1774, the representatives of the 13 colonies assembled in Philadelphia. They appealed to the King George III, the British ruler, to end the restrictions on trade and not to impose any further taxes. Without the consent of the colonies, the king regarded this as a mutiny, as against, and sent his troops to suppress them, to control them. The colonists now prepared themselves for a fight. On 4th July 1776, the representatives of all the colonies met once again at Philadelphia and adopted the Declaration of Independence, a document drafted by Thomas Jefferson. It stated that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed, they are created with certain unalienable rights and that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. The de declaration also asserted that the colonies had suffered long under the British rule and that they had every right to end it and form their own government. This assertion marked the beginning of the War of Independence. So the colonies were led by George Washington. Many battles were fought during the course of the War of Independence. The war ended in 1781 with the colonies emerging victorious. So after this, when the colonies they emerged victorious, they gave birth to the United States of America. So in 1783, the British government and the colonies signed the Treaty of Paris. The British recognized the independence of the 13 colonies. The colonies then came together to form United States of America. So in this way, United States of America was born. The constitution was drafted, which declared the USA Republic. An important part of this constitution is the Bill of Rights. It guarantees American citizens the right to freedom of speech, religion and justice. The next is the French Revolution. So now we are going to study the French Revolution, its causes. So first, the French Revolution of 1789 was one of the most important events in the history of Europe. So what were the causes of it? There were many causes under various heads, political, social, economic. Let's see the political cause first. France was ruled by Louis XVI. He believed that he was the God's representative on earth and therefore was not answerable to the people. He and his wife, Mary Antoinette, ruled like autocrats, self-ruled kings and chose to ignore the suffering of the people. This angered the people. The administrative machinery under Louis XVI had become extremely corrupt. The nobles and the officials tortured people for taxes and arrested and confined many people without trial. So this was also one of the political causes. Now let's move to the social causes. The then social, the French society was feudal in nature. It was divided into three classes or estates. The first class, the first estates were who? The clergy, the church officials. The second consisted of the nobility and the third state, which consisted of peasants, workers and the bourgeoisies 
which are like merchants, traders, doctors, teachers, lawyers and so on. These were the majority people. They constituted the 95% of the population. Now these people were charged the maximum. The bourgeoisies of the middle class despite paying taxes had no social standing. They were unhappy with the way they were treated by the people of the first and the second estates. So now let's move to the economic causes concerning money. The luxurious lifestyles of the rulers, nobility and the clergy and the frequent wars the, that France got involved in had emptied the state's treasury. There was no money there in the state's treasury. Now second cause, people belonging to the first and the second states, despite being very rich, were exempt from paying taxes. That means they were not charged taxes. The entire burden of taxation fell on the third state. Among the third states, the worst hit were the peasants and workers. So now let's move to those philosophers, those intellectuals, such as Voltaire, Rose, and Detroit, inspired people to rise against all the forms of inequality, injustice, and corruption. They preached that the real power rested with the common people, and therefore kings should rule according to the will of the people. So what was the influence of the American War of Independence? France had supported the colonists in the American War of Independence. So this France had supported those colonists. So as a result, many French soldiers had participated in the war. When the soldiers returned to France, they brought with them the revolutionary ideas of democracy and nationalism. So now let's move to the summing, the calling of the Estates General. The Estates General was a body of people representing the three estates. It had not been summoned, called since, 18, since 1614. Faced with an acute economic crisis, Louis XVI summoned the Estates General in May 1789. The members of the third state saw it was a golden chance to raise their grievances, their voice. However, the prevalent system allowed only one vote to each estate and not one vote per representative. This meant that even when the members of the third state outnumbered the members of the other two states, they could not get their demands passed. The third states therefore demanded the introduction of one man, one vote. When no agreement could be reached, the members of the third state formed the National Assembly on 17 June 1789. So on June 20, 1789, members of the National Assembly met in a tennis court and vowed to stay united in their struggle to frame a constitution for the nation. This event is known as the Tennis Court Oath. This made Louis XVI apprehensive and he resorted to terror tactics to suppress the National Assembly. It infuriated the people, it angered the people. Fighting broke out in Paris and in other parts of France. The peasants also revolted against the landlords. The Storming of the Bastille On 14 July 1789, the rebels attacked Bastille. They broke open its gates and released all the prisoners. This event, popularly known as the Storming of the Bastille, symbolized the fall of autocracy, several kings. It marked the beginning of the French Revolution. So this storming of the Bastille only marked the beginning of the French Revolution. Louis XVI and Mary Antoinette were arrested and later executed, killed. The National Assembly ended monarchy, a single rule, and established a Republican government controlled by their own people. It also adopted a famous document, Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. The basic rights of life, liberty and equality were promised to all the citizens. The ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity became the guiding principles of the Republic of France. So what was the effect? What was the impact of the revolution? We are going to see now what was the impact of this revolution in France. The revolution led to the destruction of feudalism and the growth of new economic system of capitalism. France became a republic. Citizens got basic human rights. They could now vote and elect their 
representatives. So what happened outside France? This happened in France, but what happened outside France? The French Revolution popularized the ideas of nationalism in other countries also, outside France. People began to identify themselves as a particular nation. Many countries of Europe were divided into number of small regions, tried to unite, unite and form a nation state. The ideals of freedom, equality and justice inspired people all over the world to fight for their rights. Now these were there regarding the French Revolution. Now we are going to see what happened, the post-revolution period, what happened after the revolution. The re revolution continued even after the revolution. The revolutionary ferment continued even after the revolution. England, Holland, Spain, Croatia and other European countries feared the spread of revolutionary ideas. Thus from 1792 to 1815, France was involved in a series of wars with these countries. This put a strain on the financial condition of France. It was against this background that Napoleon Bonaparte rose to power. We are going to study about Napoleon Bonaparte. The most powerful man in France at this time was Napoleon. He became a general in the French army. Napoleon was a very ambitious man. In his desire to control the whole of Europe, he led France into numerous wars. Soon after crowning himself as emperor, Napoleon declared war on Austria and defeated the Austrian forces in 1805. In the same year, he defeated the combined armies of Austria and Russia in the Battle of Orsalis. In 1806, France defeated Prussia and routed the Russian army in 1807. Thus, a large part of Europe came under the control of France. Napoleon's military campaigns were fired with one motive, to displace Britain from its privileged position in Europe. Such was his contempt for Britain that he called it a nation of shopkeepers. Who? Britain. In 1812, Napoleon was made, had made France the power center of Europe. His decline began after his Russian campaign in 1812. He made the mistake of invading Russia in winter. A large part of his army perished due to the bitter cold. Napoleon's reputation suffered a big blow. The enemies of France saw this as a great opportunity to strike the empire. Major European powers such as Sweden, Austria, Prussia and Russia formed an alliance and defeated France in the Battle of Leipzig in 1813. The Allied forces occupied Paris in 1812 and Napoleon was forced to abdicate in that place. He was exiled to the island of Elba. You know what's exile? To stay away from one's territory. Napoleon however refused to accept his defeat. He gathered a small army with which he marched to Belgium but he was defeated once again in the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. This battle shattered Napoleon's dream of returning to power. The British exiled Napoleon to the island of St. Helena where he died in 1821. This is there in this lesson. I hope you have understood this lesson and it will be easy for you to write the question answers. Thank you.